So we all know communication is key. And it's also key when we come to fighting climate change. But how can those who actually live change stop preaching to themselves and escape the green bubble? What role should technology providers play in encouraging unity rather than division? And what can we learn from the latest research in communication science? We are about to find out in our panel about bursting the green bubble with better communication. So please welcome our panel host, an expert in communication and the CEO and founder of Vollpension Medien GmbH, Sven Wedig, and his guests, Anne Makusinski, inventor and writer at Macotronics Enterprises Incorporated, Eva Maria Kirsch Sieper, public policy director, sustainability, EMIA at Meta, Christian von den Brinken, managing director of Ströer, and Jürgen Kornmann, chief marketing officer at Deutsche Bahn AG. So. Hi. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, that, that fits brilliant. <laughs> we talked about like the go. role of us. We had to mix. I told you I didn't listen. <laughs> Happy to see you, all of you, in person. We have prepared a little game with you guys sitting here in the audience, which because we find out backstage that climate change needs to be the right persons in the right positions at the right timing in the right situation. So what we want in the first two minutes is that you introduce yourself, like the man or woman behind you, you have to say hello, like in a church, left to you, right to you. We want a short conversation to you of guys, change visit cards, and if you have no one sitting behind you, you have to move one row. So it's not a joke at the end, please say hello, otherwise I will come into the audience and help you guys introducing yourself. Ah, yeah, that works. Normally, it gets a, bit, a little bit louder. Good. And the problem is then to get the audience back. Yeah. So we will find out. We will find out. So how many time do we give them? Like two minutes? 30 minutes. 30 yeah. minutes. 30 minutes. Yeah. The entire yeah. panel, we yeah. Can, we can lean back. <laughs> we are talking. It might be talking. more interesting <laughs> than our talk. It's a, they it's seem a communication excited. panel. Come yeah, on. I mean, probably they're building up the next relevant startup in terms of climate. In two minutes. For all the people who are like not talking to anyone else, have not understand we see <laughs> the you. work. We see you. <laughs> you guys as well. You have to move <laughs> a little bit and introduce yourself. Oh, yeah, that works. So it's really bursting the bubble today, yes. isn't it? Obviously, yes. obviously. Yeah. The social bubble as well. This is how communication <laughs> works. Yeah, together. I, isn't it the claim, together we change? Yeah, absolutely. It's probably the claim, done. the purpose. Thanks, and we are done, we can go. <laughs> Made it. We can go. Long trip, but we can go now. Okay. okay um, the hardest part for me is now to getting your attention uh, back to this unbelievable panel. Um, I know it's hard to get you out of your little dialogues. Hopefully, I get you all within here. We're sitting here. <laughs> Right in front of you, you now have to stop it to talk to the others. <laughs> so again, um, thank you very much for all of you being here. Some have long ways, some have shorter ways. Um, some are probably not in time, some are in time, but we get it all done. Um, and we can probably start with you. Um, oh gosh, okay. Were you, uh, you're nervous? No. You no, said to no. me it's like the second or the third time you've been in on the panel. In person again. Like I know, it's kind of crazy. I'm excited to be here. And um, to directly go into the theme of communication, like why is it so important in your point of view that, for example, artists communicate with science and it's not like a real own science communication? Well, I think a lot of people who don't have a science background or who don't feel particularly knowledgeable when it comes to sustainability and the science behind it can feel quite intimidated when they hear about new technologies. But what I've believed in, I started inventing when I was a teenager. Um, I was here a few years ago for the Green Awards as well, for the youngster category, is just that anybody can do it. Anybody can come up with a solution. It's actually just following through and making it that matters. And the best inventions we get are usually a combination 
of science and art, where it's aesthetically pleasing, it's beautiful and easy to use, but the science and tech is behind it to work really well. Our iPhones are a great example of this. Um, and so when it comes to science communication, we need scientists and artists to work together so people understand what's going on in simplified terms, uh, but also the science is behind it so that they can really get it. And Jürgen, in terms of communication, um, Anne says like, it's definitely a theme of anybody. We need to reach anybody. Probably it is then the one-to-one -one communication, a similar communication. How is the role from Deutsche Bahn who connects so many people together? Of course, we have to address every single individual in our society in order to make an impact. Because otherwise, if we only prove it's us, Deutsche Bahn, the good corporate citizen who cares about our environment who d and who does everything to uh, preserve our planet, that's not the image transfer that works in the end. In the end, every single user of Deutsche Bahn must get the impression that in the very moment I step into a train, I'm part of the movement. I'm on the good side too. So this means we have to burst our corporate bubble and we have to get in the individual bubble. And for this, we have to create individual messages that have a relevance in the everyday life of each of our target groups. So it's mainly addressing the 90% of the modal split who still use their car for transportation purposes, rather than addressing the 10% who are already convinced that Deutsche Bahn is the most uh, sustainable way of transport. So if a single communication is the solution, maybe, and then platforms getting in a huge interesting role, how is your perspective on sustainable messaging and news on social media networks? Um, well, first of all, I would say um, that the climate crisis is actually also a climate communication crisis. I think we have a huge lack of information out there and it's very, very important to start thinking about how we communicate individually, but also more broadly. And I believe that working for a, a communications platform that we obviously have a role to play, play here. How do we reach people with verified information? How do we make sure that there is enough knowledge around climate change? And also the other way around, for example, what we do is we use the connection to the user in order to gather more information about what individual users think. So, for example, with um, the Yale program for climate change communication, last year we did a survey on our platform, a climate opinion survey, that gives a lot of insight about how people think about the climate crisis, about whether they think they are affected, whether they think um, it's a threat, or whether they are receptive to also taking individual action. And all of that information that we can bring can then help inform other decision-making from policymakers or from also how to communicate to people in certain regions. Christian, in terms of communication, you are a fan, as I understood it, of, of bold messages. And that is, that is what you're missing in terms of communication due to sustainability? Yes, in a way, I mean, frankly, when we call it communication, it sounds a bit complex, doesn't it? I mean, even the word is complex. And, and what I feel is that many people are not living in the bubble in which we live. So many people have little understanding of what sustainability is about, except the fact that it doesn't allow them to drive their car, it doesn't allow them to live the way they lived before. So this is why I think you should put messaging and a rather easy to understand way and a broad audience to get many people joining in. And frankly, if you see how many advertising campaigns are outside and how many are essentially talking about sustainability, then there was a misfit in my opinion. Okay, so like... It seems to be difficult for brands to find a solution on that. For me, it... it, it it looks like a little bit that it's getting expensive. And it's getting expensive for brands, it's getting expensive for politics, but it's also getting expensive for science and also for the users, um, for the citizens. What is your opinion? Like, is sustainable communication for everybody? And can everybody be 
directly sustainable because you get reached by a bold message? Right. I mean, it's difficult because as a young person, I have so many friends that are university students or in high school, and they simply just aren't at the point in their lives where they can easily afford to buy the sustainable solutions that are offered to them, whether it is in the foods that they buy or the clothing that they buy and materials for their home. Uh, or wherever they live. So it's difficult, but it's also really important to have the messaging communicate to them that, yes, this is like an easier and cheaper option, but thinking long term the actual effects that it has, not just on your bank account, but on everyone else, you know, is, and the entire planet is really important. So it's something, I believe sustainability is quote unquote affordable for everyone because it's not just about what you buy. In fact, you should try and buy less, if anything, but it's also about how you live your day-to-day -day life, what actions you take, whether it's biking or walking instead of taking a, the car um, and things like that. So it's a tricky balance, I think, but I th the more messaging that we have, I think also on social media is really important for you the average person to look through whoever they follow and see, oh, this person, you know, t biked today and they posted about it. And maybe I can do that too and feel a little bit better about my carbon footprint, et cetera. I have one short remark on that. Uh, we made a survey last year, and in Germany, roughly 50% of people care about sustainability. Good news. Bad news, 50 don't. So it's about allocating budget and reaching budget via platforms for the other 50% who are not into these themes and not interesting in the themes. Do, do Deutsche Bahn allocate budget directly into these target groups? We rather try to create campaigns that really send out relevant messages to the target groups rather than um, creating uh, um, overall campaigns which who can't transport really the, the um, individual added value we provide for each and everybody. So it's mainly precision marketing, it's mainly individual approach, and even if somebody belongs to the 50% uh, of uh, the people in Germany who has no idea what sustainability is all about. We have to communicate the benefits, like uh, while you travel with a train, you can watch your favorite movie, or you can have a, a lunch, or you can take a nap. So this is sustainability in respect of individual trade-offs benefits, added value. And this is the, the type of relevance we want to achieve in our individual target group communication. And this, is, uh, this is helps rising platforms. So platforms like Meta um, are the ones where you can communicate the best way on one-on-one? -on -one? Well, they're one way of communicating, of course, but it, they're on platforms like um, Meta's platforms, there are, it's a great way to interact with people very directly and to reach them also with individual messaging, which I think is very important. But it's also a good way because I think before you can actually get people to take the train and feel good about doing something for the environment, you have to make sure that they understand that there is an issue. They have to have a certain knowledge level and a an, uh, level of understanding that a lot of people don't have right now. We, we are here in Germany, maybe there's high, like 50%, yes, but there's, it might be lower elsewhere, it might be higher um, otherwhere. But I think generally it's important to understand where do those, where do people, where are they in the level of knowledge and then address them with the, with the additional uh, knowledge that they need to have that then a, um, makes them take new different and individual choices, but also really be more adaptive and receptive to messages that they receive from, um, from the, their environment. So relevant player obviously need to change a little bit of their role in communication. So to be a little bit provocative, can we say like we communicated wrong the last 15 years to all of you? Because when I wrote yesterday some things about it, mainly it's a dis discussion since 15 years, feels a little bit like a circle, which never ends. Um, which role has anybody, and is the prioritization right right now? What do you guys think, Anne? Oh, gosh. Well, 
I mean, talking about sustainability is one thing, but it's actually doing it and taking action on it, that's another. Um, I personally feel like the educational system has to radically change. I would almost say it's in some places almost 100 years behind um, when it comes to really starting kids at a really young age, even kindergarten, teaching them not just about sustainability and, oh, you should recycle, this is where the recycling garbage, but also about inventing and electronics. I think also slightly older kids starting to reach middle school and high school because they're on social media now realize, hey, I could actually have a positive impact if I share something that I've made online. Uh, so instead of assigning kids in their science classes, you know, here's some physics textbook questions, go like make partners and come up with an invention at the end of the semester and present it. I think we need more things where kids actually feel like and get excited about what they're making and feel like it could make a positive impact, especially in the sustainable space, because I think everybody, to some degree, uh, that is young wants to help save the planet in some ways. It just can feel like a very overwhelming and big topic to tackle. So I think introducing it very organically and this kind of problem-solving, inventing mindset from a young age is something we, should, we need to be doing at the very beginning. So conclusion is there to start earlier, going more into younger and younger people? Is this? Yes, I think that's part said? that needs to be addressed, like the root, the young people need to be addressed. And then as we get older, that's, I think, a different situation to address that maybe you can speak on. Christian, what needs to change? Speed. Speed needs to change. I think there was, everywhere you look, there was too much legacy. So, I mean, there was legacy in education. Because what you said is absolutely right, but, but in Germany there was a lab plan, and the German lab plan would tell you that you're not allowed to put these crazy topics in the lab plan mm -hmm. just because they are not there yet. Mm -hmm. So this is why they don't get in. Wow. So there was little innovation. And at everywhere you look, I mean, even in, in how brands are changing their campaigning and advertising, we are too slow in what we do because maybe we love too much what we have. Because it's nice <laughs> to have all this. Nobody wants to give it away for nothing, right? So, so there was no new promise. If you give it away what you have, what's a promise? There was little promise. And that's maybe the big difference between us and the Chinese. The Chinese government is very good in giving promises. <laughs> okay. So we're going from earlier to faster to more relevant information and more like... Yes, uh, I think one... Important piece, and of course, I agree that you need to start earlier and, and get that information out there. But of course, we're running out of time. We need mm -hmm. to be faster. We can't wait until those who we're educating now are grown up to then take action. Action needs to happen today. So what we know is that people take um, more action if they feel they're personally affected. And there are a lot of people who do not believe yet that they are personally affected. So one way, and being the corporate person here, of course, <laughs> we're... Um, you both are. You both yeah, are yeah, like, right. for your help. <laughs> You're not alone. Um, we, we're trying to also um, build products that help sort of take more or drive that behavioral change. And I personally believe, for example, that VR, virtual reality, experiencing that and experiencing how it really feels to be in a, in a flooded environment or how it really feels to be in a, um, surrounded by fire or whatever it is. Um, getting that real experience and that cr creating that empathy, I think, can really help drive that change. So hopefully, our products will play a role in that regard as well. But again, that is only one out of many uh, things that we need to look at. Okay. So, Jung, in my point of view, I was one of these guys who ordered a Bankcard 100 due to climate rabat, climate uh, discount, uh, until the end of last year. It was like with Glasgow, I think. And that's right. That's where I bought for all of us in the company a Bankcard. So, Great the decision. solution should be that all of the students and little school kids need a Bankcard for free. Is this possible? Well, actually, as we are still a state-owned company, uh, that's a question uh, our politicians have to deal with. Okay. Uh, from my personal point of view, why not? <laughs> okay, so it's a bit about like next row politician from where, and that was like a sign I made in all of the preparation. There was always a sign which was euro or dollars. So from where is coming the money to do all of that? Is it just politicians or is it corporate platforms, media? inventions as well, founders, from, from, where is, from where is the money? Well, regarding Deutsche Bahn, we are part of the um, overall welfare. 
And uh, we have to fulfill the expectations of 80 million Germans and all our other customers uh, from, from other countries um, in order to be successful and to create an impact. For example, when we introduce the 100% renewable energies uh, for um, driving our long distance trains. Mm -hmm. By that time, in uh, 2012, nobody cared about it. So we have to be empathic, sensitive, and we have to be early adopters of overall trends in our society. And uh, it's, it's uh, very much the same with the uh, um, food on board of our trains. Right now, we offer 50% organic, uh, vegan, or uh, vegetarian uh, food. We are ahead of the, of the uh, uh, trends of, uh, of uh, the society, but we have to be ahead in order to make a change. Mm -hmm. a, a little bit harder in like, order to make a change in terms of learning. Um, I also write one thing down due to the preparation that was COVID. And I was like, at one point, I had a sign which is like COVID similar to climate crisis, but climate crisis is far longer. And the bigger problem overall, did we learn something out of COVID crisis in terms of media invention, but also platform and corporate? Is there, in your point of view, any kind of learning which you have out of these like COVID times? Christian? Well, I mean, there was a, at the beginning of COVID, the uh, WHO had a clear announcement to, to, to everybody out there to improve communication. And many uh, municipalities were asking back, why should we improve communication? We have a completely different crisis. And they said, this is very much about people doing what you tell them to do. So if you don't succeed in communication, they won't move. You will tell them to use a mask and people will not do it. You will tell them to get vaccinated and people will not do it. And I fear now we have the mess because we were not good enough in communication. I personally would say we are still not very good in this and we definitely have to improve that. For COVID, for climate crisis, actually for any transformation that is ahead of our society. By the way, also for digitalization, which hasn't yet really begun in my opinion. Yeah, I had these bad experiences. And uh, please add yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting for me because when COVID began, I'm Canadian, but I was living in New York. And I very viscerally kind of experienced the American reaction to it, which was funny because I don't think a lot of people really understood COVID was like a real thing that was happening until Tom Hanks caught COVID in Australia. And then America was like, COVID is happening, everybody run. And it was truly appalling just not just in America, but I was, that's what I experienced, just how many people did not believe COVID was existing or that it was real or it was like all these conspiracy theories, which is a huge problem in communication is now all these people are putting crazy things online that people are totally sucking up and believing like, oh, it was planned, you know, don't get the vaccine and put a chip in, like all these things. And I was just like, what is going on in the state? So I really, science communication is just so important on multiple levels, but I was especially reminded of it during COVID when so many people around America, people that I knew in Canada were just like, it's not real, it's not a thing, it's just, you know. And just, people, I don't know if people are reading the statistics, but so many people were affected, so many people died. And if that doesn't speak for itself, how can we communicate better and more effectively to the people who are still in denial? And when it comes to climate change, I think it's the same kind of approach. Maybe if, if I can add yeah, to that. Yeah, for sure. To that, um, because you also said the science needs to be communicated. And that's 100%, I think, identical to the, to the climate communication. And then you need additional science to understand how to, cr uh, how to communicate the science, yeah. right? So that's actually yeah. what we do. We work with the Yale Program for Climate Change Communication that supports us in understanding how we actually reach people. And they work with us in, in doing that survey that I just talked about. So I think that is a, a question within itself, how to communicate it right so it actually lands with the people. So they, for example, also understand that there is basically no doubt within science mm -hmm. that climate change is happening, that climate change is man-made. Those are still things that people are not sure about. So, but still, how do you communicate that to the people? And that's where I think platforms like ours can play a really good role in, in getting those messages out. 
but the science shouldn't be understood by the scientists only, yeah. but by the average people, right? So, yeah. And for that, you have to translate it in a bold way. I mean, we've seen many complex communication that nobody understood, and I mean, that's a challenge. Yeah. So Pictures are good. Yeah. So is there for Deutsche Bahn as well learnings in terms of digitalization, but also climate change, like due to COVID? And you can say we can transfer them hard, because in my point of view, it's really hard to understand. We learned so much. Yeah. We had to pay price for that. Yeah. But now we not like transfer this learning into the next step, which yeah. is weird. Like how, how do corporate like yours handle this? Well, despite the fact that um, COVID caused huge losses in respect of uh, revenues, um, it taught us a, a great lesson because we learned that in this special situation, we have to reduce our communication to the really essential pieces of information that are relevant to our users. In, in, in the very beginning, we canceled all our campaigns and we, we concentrated on the pieces of information. How can I travel in times of COVID? Is it secure? What do I need to know? How can we get through this together? What are the uh, measures uh, of Deutsche Bahn in respect of uh, hygienic uh, uh, things or um, di digitalization, um, contactless uh, ticketing and so on? All that was really forced and, and uh, s speeded and accelerated in, in this time. And I'm really glad that we learned that less communication and uh, less um, variety of, um, of uh, certain um, campaigns and, and certain uh, messages we want to get across is better than having a, 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 a situation where you don't provide enough help and uh, uh, support for the people which have to concentrate on the uh, things which are important during pandemic. We're, we're running a bit at the end of this really, really interesting thing. If we have to, or like everybody have to put three things on the table of communication in terms of green and sustainability, what will these three things be which you put on the table? Is it bold message? Is it buzz budget? What, what, like when we go the way around and what will you put on the table? Well, will I personally or what yeah. do I hope? Will no, be personally. Personally? Yeah. Um, well, currently I'm writing my first book on the inventing mindset, which is basically the concept that every, anyone can be an inventor. Um, we're all built, we've evolved as humans to solve problems for each other, uh, and it kind of helps people rediscover that because typically when we think of an inventor, it's not usually, it's usually like an old, bald man from the 1800s. So I want to kind of rebrand that and bring it to the newer and younger generations. So that's something that I'm putting on the table. Uh, I've gotten patents for my inventions that use thermal electricity in Canada and the US, finally, which has taken literally up until now. Uh, and so I hope to get those into production in the format of children's toys that, are, that run off of green energy in the future. Um, and I'm ho hoping to host a show about futurism, which is how past art, especially film, TV, books, have predicted and influenced current science and technology. So if anybody in the audience <laughs> has any connections for me to host a show, let me know. <laughs> Great. Christian, when I look to you and talking about Ströer, could it be that you put on the table that 10% of every media spending putting into Ströer from the media spenders is going directly into sustainability communication? Uh, we do that already, frankly. If there was a good idea, but there has to be a good idea. So, I mean, we have 300,000 boards all over Germany and reach 80% of people within a week. No other media can do that. And, and in order to really uh, reach people and change their mindset, I think you need good pictures and you need to repeat it. So these are the two simple solutions for that. So, but frankly, we lack good campaigns. Okay. What's up with Meta? What do Meta put on the table and you personally put on the table? Um, well, I think it's what, what I talked about, making sure that we get the facts to the people, making sure that people understand 
what the causes are, what the solutions are, what they individually can do, and then hopefully trying to engage in also personal climate action, but also societal climate action. I think that's something that our platform can support, but that I personally also think um, is a good thing to do and to go forward with. What I learned to, from you backstage in terms of communication is to talk about the things you're actually doing, talking about, in Germany we said, to a gutes und spreche darüber, talking about the good things, like I, I went here by bicycle, which is, was not so easy with this <laughs> Um What does put Deutsche Bahn on the table, Jürgen, and you personally? Well, my message is um, a green lifestyle is fun rather than renunciation. It's about discovering new things and um, making a start by let your car where it is and take the train. Could be the, the very first step of a wonderful life. Okay, so at the end, as a good host, I have to be a little bit mean. Um, everybody can make their own discussion with it, what happens there. So my last question with the normal short answers where you are going where you guys going into holiday after or when the holidays <laughs> begins and hopefully nobody says thailand with a 380 <laughs> because then the discussion is really empty and where you where you flying where am i flying next i mean i'm just going back to new york this is my holiday <laughs> really <laughs> yes so you We're stay coming. in new york i don't use no i'm going moving back to canada to finish okay. my degree okay yeah Christian? I'm going to the U.S. national parks to show it to my son before they, they are suffering even more. Okay, so you're trying to build the emotional bridge with your son, but still that you're flying? That was my idea. Yeah, great. But you got me. <laughs> Where are you going? Well, I, I'm not trying to be the poster child here, but I'm actually planning to go to Italy by train and travel Italy by train. <laughs> so, and also talking about it on social media so people can see that it is fun. Okay. Yeah. If you are looking for me, you will find me in the Alps. Oh, okay. So then we meet in the Alps because I will go there as well, as okay. always. Um, How do you get there? I buy a bicycle, <laughs> roughly. Biking up the mountain. You got us. Okay. It's like the, the red light is blinking. Thank you very much for being here. It was a great honor talking to you in this surrounding. Um, yeah. Hope to see you guys later on and hopefully everybody see from you. Hopefully you enjoyed it a little bit. Enjoy Green Tech Festival, have a great day, and come back home safe. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much, Sven. <laughs> and of course, thank you to all panelists.